sight on a local filmmaker, uh, publisher, uh, and uh, co-editor of a geek website called Rise Up Daily. It's riseupdaily.com. We have some stickers here. If you guys want to come pick them up afterward, feel free. Uh, in the meantime, we've got uh, three local guys here who are uh, making it happen. They're following their dreams, and we kind of want to pick their brain today and uh, see how they got there, and, and uh, you know maybe they can have some helpful tips for us. At the end, we've got PJ Perez. Yeah, he runs Pop Goes the Icon, which is an actual comic book publisher uh, in town. He's also a writer and uh, jack of all trades kind of thing. Uh, Next to him, we've got Troy Hurd, and uh, he runs Onyx Theater, and uh, it's a really cool place. They do uh, off-Broadway kind of things, and uh, if you didn't know, the um, Evil Dead the Musical, which is at Planet Hollywood, they actually started at Onyx Theater, so. We have one of the stars who started that show right here in the audience with us. Awesome. Awesome. I just saw it for the first time a week ago. Yeah. Did you get nice and bloody? Oh, yeah. Uh, as <laughs> Uh, and then on the end, uh, we have Doug Poyabu, right? yeah. uh, and he owns and runs Retro City Games. They've got a little setup back there. You guys played some uh, some of those games they brought. Um, so welcome, guys. And uh, what I want everybody to do is just kind of go down the line. Um, you know, again, restate your name, and then what it is you do at your game session. So Doug, we'll start with you. All right. So my name's uh, Doug Poyabu. Um, I'm the co-owner of Retro City Games. Um, my girlfriend and I own the shop. We are a retro video game store. Um, literally anything video games we sell. If it's merchandise, if it's the systems, the games, everything. Um, everything from the television, Odyssey and Atari, Commodore type stuff, all the way through modern gaming, PS4, Xbox One. Um, we love it. I mean, it's it's more of a hangout for gamers. Um, we do tournaments, we do free game nights, we do a little bit of everything. Um, just trying to go over a central spot for the uh, gaming community. I'm Troy Hurd. I'm the producing director of the Onyx Theater. The Onyx has been around. Well, we're entering the 10th anniversary season next month with the production yeah. of Hedwig and the Angry Inch. Um, it had a reputation of being the, the little theater behind the Naughty Shop. But when I uh, took over in January, we kicked out the Naughty Shop. We turned that into a little studio space. So we've been offering professional improv classes there. And our goal is to make it a new, like an Upright Citizens Brigade, Groundling, Second City kind of place. And we have a 10th anniversary season with a bunch of really geeky shows coming up. We've got a show in fact called Geek in February, which is about cosplayers. October has a show called She Kills Monsters, which is about D&D gamers. Lots and lots of fun. So that's my full-time job, is running that and directing around town. Where is Onyx Theater located? Onyx right Theater is located at 953 East Sahara Avenue, Suite 16B, right next to the Green Door. Uh, <laughs> I would have just said commercials. Yeah, very specific. That's this. Uh, 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 Ash Shahab said, I'm PJ Perez. Uh, I run Pop Goes the Icon, which is a comic book publishing company. We've been yeah. here doing that for about six years. I've been here in Las Vegas for about 25. Um, I also am a writer both of comics and of journalism. I've written for most of the papers in town. Um, I do a lot of travel writing also. I'm also an illustrator. Uh, I've drawn my own comics. I've done stuff for other people. Uh, I've done books, book illustrations. Of my work's been in like local magazines and stuff like that. Uh, and I, I, as Shahab said, I'm Jack Baltrace. I actually worked on a short film with Troy here a few years ago. Um, somehow to do most of these things and make money at at least half of them. <laughs> Great. Now, I, I do want to kind of dive into how you guys got into what you do, but before before we do that, um, it's, it's quite obvious that the things that you're into and that you're doing as a profession, um, you know, it's, it's passion. It's a lot of passion. So... When starting that, did anyone ever tell you, you know what, you shouldn't do that, just go get a regular job, and if, if so, what did you, um, you know, what was your comeback to that? PJ, we'll start with you. Um, I don't think that anyone's ever told me don't do that. And I guess that's, I guess that's part of the thing is it's really important to have supportive people around you who recognize that sometimes you just need to go and follow your passion, whether it's good or bad, you'll kind of figure it out yourself. Um, I mean, 
Yeah, I, I don't. I, realistically, are you going to uh, build a career as a doing cosplay or you know something like that? Maybe not. Although some people have, yeah. they do. But um, you know, I, I never started doing any of these things to have a career or make money. It was something that you do that you love, and if other people love what you do equally, then you're going to be even rewarded spiritually or financially. I'll answer your question. Troy? I get told that every day of my life. <laughs> I mean, even in my ripe old age of two numbers that are totaling up to four and zero here. Um, but ever since I was young, you can't make a career of this, but I'm defying that. Is it a great career? No, it's not a great career, but what, what holds you out is the passion, is the hope, is the what's the next thing. I mean, occasionally you do have to do the soul selling and work for the man, and I've done that on occasion, but you do that to fuel the one that you do love. You know, it keeps you going. But yeah, what do you say? Well, I can't say what I say to those people. Beep. <laughs> <laughs> right. Duh. Oh, I'm kind of in the same boat as you. I mean, every day family members, friends, before we opened the shop, all said, why would you make a store about video games? GameStop exists, Walmart exists, all these other big retailers exist, and why are you doing this? It was mostly just because there wasn't anything, like I didn't, I felt there was a need for that like home style type of shop, and something that filled that void that they don't give, and people didn't get it. Still, every day people walk into our shop and they're like, so do you guys make money? Like, that's, that's a legitimate <laughs> question, like people are like, so how are sales? And it's, I mean, it, it's an awkward question to answer. Yeah, we're, we're busy. I mean, it's it's part because we're a little niche, but it's also because I think it's kind of a passion for what you're doing. I mean, I'm not going to be a millionaire tomorrow, but I work for myself, and I, I love video games, so I mean, what better, <laughs> what, what better thing could I be doing? How long have you guys had the shop? We've been open at a physical location for about nine, almost ten months now. So it's in September. Oh. Very cool. Um... So then, let's get back to the original idea. You know, how did you get into it? That, you know, I, I do, again, I do all kinds of creative things, and people are always like, man, how do you do it? And my answer to them is, I don't know. There's, there's no plan. I don't set out every day to, you know, do something creative. I just, I can't turn my brain off. I have to do something creative, or, you know, I go nuts. So, um, you know, is it something similar, or is it, you know, what, what, Fuel your passion to get into the profession that you're in. We'll start with that. Um, when my girlfriend and I met, um, we bonded really heavily over two things, music and video games. And a lot of our, you know, first dates and stuff like that were us just hanging out playing games. Um, and we both got really heavy into the collecting about, I'd say, five years ago or so. Um, and it turned into, oh, I want to buy, I need this game, but I have to buy these ten to get it. And we ended up with a lot of extra stuff, either trading or selling to other people. Um, and is that because it was part of like an auction? Or well, I mean, or, or it's just even I mean, individuals, a lot of people aren't willing to piece out 10 $5 games. I mean, they, they don't want to sell you a $5 game and you do a $5 game. They'd rather just make 40 or 50 off the entire lot. Um, even if I'm getting a good deal, and I, I realized that we were pretty much collecting for free for the most part. I mean, we were pretty good at it. And, um, we had failed, and I'll be the first to say we failed in two other business ventures before that. Um, lost a lot of money. <laughs> um, I mean, up until about a year and a half ago, I was selling suits at Dillard's. And that, that was my, I guess you could call it 9 to 5, nine to five yeah. but I was there probably 70 hours a week. Um, and hated every minute of it. Like, I mean, I was making great money, but I hated it. And um, we kind of sat down one day and just had a discussion about we hate what we're doing. We hate why we're doing it. And what can we do to kind of change that? And we said, well, why don't we, you know, pursue this? And that was about a year and a half ago or so. Yeah, beginning of last year. And, yeah, we just said, all right, this is our plan. This is how we're going to do it. This is what we have to save. And kind of went about it. And the rest is kind of, we're here. <laughs> and so, yeah. What was the question again? <laughs> so, it's obvious that, that passion is what fuels what you do. Um, but I don't, I don't know what else I would do, honestly. I started out, 
My credit goes back to when I was their age. I was making movies with a VHS camera on my shoulder. You know, doing a little stop motion with my Heenan and G.I. Joe figures. Uh, that was my first goal. I grew up, I was a horror geek. You know, I could list every killing and every Halloween, every Nightmare on Elm Street, every Friday the 13th. I watched slasher movies day in and day out. I wanted to do that when I grew up. I wanted to, well, I wanted to be an Imagineer, wanted to create haunted houses, wanted to do all these really, really cool things. But I'm from the middle of nowhere, Georgia. I'm from a small military town. And film schools were not really an option there. Um, so I was shooting all these little small movies. No way anyone could see it. We didn't have YouTube back then. But my high school principal at the time came up. My, we got a new one my sixth sophomore year. Came and said, you make all these weird movies. We don't have a drama department. Why don't you come run it? Why don't you come create it? He gave me a line item in the school budget to keep to the auditorium and said, go do that. And the last thing I wanted to do was theater. Because I thought theater was the snobbiest, most boring thing in the world. It was stupid Shakespeare and these things that we were taught in English class that put you to sleep. So I came in, combined my little love of horror movies into that, and just sort of started in high school. And since then, I've never seen an option out of it. Now that's just you self-produce, you keep creating, and... Once a blue moon, the producer with a deep pocket says, hey, let's do something with that. And you do something with that. It's kind of been it. And you take the money and make it. Yep. <laughs> and PJ? Uh, um, I have a Tumblr. And everyone's got Tumblr, but this is everyone under the age of 30, which I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> In case you couldn't figure that out. Um, and it's called Homemade Comics. And if you go on there, there are these comics that I made that I've scanned, and they date back to when I started when I was about nine, and I made them consistently until I was about 14, which is about the age where other things started getting more interesting. Uh, not that comics ever stopped getting interesting, it's just I took a break. <laughs> and I just spent all of my free time making comics. I mean, and these weren't just, like, these were entire series, universes, like, I mean, I included copyright information in them. Uh, it was it was really complex, and that led into when I was in high school, I self-published zines, which were the paper equivalent of blogs for those of you under a certain age. <laughs> um, and that actually, for me, transitioned into a career of writing, and I came back to comics years later. But that was always there, and I always had these. I just always told stories through words and through pictures. <laughs> And that's really the only thing that I've ever been good at that people were willing to like give me money for. I didn't like set out to be a writer. I set out to be a musician, but I failed at being a rock star. So I found out that the alternative was to write about rock stars. Um, and that drive to self-publish never went away. So when I kind of started to think about writing comics again, I kind of I never had an interest, I mean, not since I was a kid, and I didn't want to, like, draw Spider-Man or write Batman, like, I wanted to tell my own stories. So, that's what I did, and I started self-publishing, and then I noticed that there were other people I knew, other creators, who they wanted to get their stuff out, too, and they, there weren't enough venues. So, I kind of turned the self-publishing venture into a publishing company, and, unfortunately, never stopped. Still waiting to see if I ever make money off of it, but we put a lot of money into it. <laughs> you have a friend, uh, he has a record label in New York, and the literal tagline of this record label is losing money since 1999. <laughs> <laughs> if, if it's passion, you kind of go for it. So, you know, to a certain extent, the reason Juan and Gila chose you guys um, was because, to a certain extent, you guys are successful in what you guys are doing. Um, so, going off of that, what do you feel has attributed to your success? I'm going to name three things, and you can pick one of those and kind of, you know, jump off that, or if there's something other than these three, go for it. Is it because you wake up early, and that's not something you're accustomed to, and then you wake up early, you get all your stuff done, and you're being responsible? Is it because you decided to turn off the TV, you've watched less, uh, TV shows and movies and kind of got your stuff done? Or is it because you kept yourself motivated? And if so, how? Uh, PJ will start with you. It's funny that you mentioned the TV thing. Because I, I've got a booth over here, so make sure after you stop by, stop by the pocket, see the icon table before this thing closes down. 
And I'm next to my friend from Hell Pop Comics. And stop by there too. And I kept talking about all this TV stuff. I'm assuming it was TV stuff. Maybe it was movie. I have no idea. And I was like, what? I don't know what you're talking about. If I see cosplayers, I'm like, who are they? Um, I don't I don't consume a lot. I don't have I would rather spend the time making things and producing things. And I guess that that for me it is the motivation. Like I don't have a choice. And I think like you were talking about this. You wake up and you've got all these things going on and you just have to get it out. I have to put things out. I have to be I'm not good at vacationing, I'm not good at relaxing. Um, you know, I have two modes. I'm either passed out asleep or I'm doing something. I don't really have a middle ground. So, I mean, for me, it's just that constant drive to produce. When I go see a show, if I go see a band or something, it's really, even if it's my favorite band, it's hard for me to enjoy because I think I should be up there playing instead. You know, I went to go see Avenue Q last night at Las Vegas Little Theater, and I was like, man, why am I not, why, I was, they have a live band. I was like, why am I not playing the band right now? Like, that's, that's just, that's the way that it, it goes for me. So there's really no, there's no choice but to keep producing. Also different when you're lively. Huh? It's also different when it's your lively. Well, yeah, I mean, because I mean, it, it's it. You, I think you feel more obligated to the passion. You feel more obligated to and more committed to what you're doing. Well, I'm committed to deadlines. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's very much you know, it's, it's one thing you know, when you take it. I'm sure you're doing this from just you know, all on the couch, doing that kind of stuff. To well, if I don't make this deadline, yeah, yeah, and that's a very different mentality. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that the passion's gone, or it's not that you've sold out or anything, it's just, it makes you think about all of your free time much differently. Well, I guess it's like, you could be accused of playing video games, right? But yeah. that is what you do, <laughs> you, that is your living, exactly. Well, to, to an extent, I mean, I, the, the big joke we always say is like, the irony of owning a video game store is I never play video games. I mean, I maybe, and it, it sucks where I used to be able to, you know, you know, get off working on a long day of work and binge for four or five hours and take mine out and everything. That's awesome. Now I maybe play four or five hours a week, if that, and that's me just trying to like keep up and stay relevant. Yeah. I mean, when I do get days off, I, you know, which are done, <laughs> I, I try to play them I mean, in holidays, but even then I, I feel guilty. It's kind of like you're saying, I feel like I'm like not doing what I'm supposed to be doing, because there's always something I can do to make the business better and the community better. And that's but, but it's interesting you say that because you, you talk about, oh, I would get off of work and then I would play video games for four to five hours to like unwind or whatever. But now that you're doing what you want, maybe you do not feel that need that you're like, oh god, I, you know, I had to do this soul sucking job. Now I have to, you know, now I have to engross myself in video games. Whereas now you're like, I'm spending the time doing what I want. It's actually the opposite. I mean, I I, I feel like I don't spend enough time with it. I mean, I, I love video games. I mean, it's like I love everything about the idea of you know creating an entire interactive world. There's just something amazing about that. that Somebody else, a team of people, or a single person can sit there and create an entire world universe that you can explore. And sometimes find things they didn't even intend, or, you know, with other people. And, you know, people that you'll never meet and never want to meet. I mean, that, that's amazing to me. But it comes down to the, and I hate to say it, when you have a passion, and that passion is your business, it's, it comes down to business. And it's kind of what I was saying, like, yeah, I'm at the shop 10 to 8 every day as far as when we're open. But most days I'm there until 10 or 11. I'm normally there at 8 or 9 in the morning. And then when I get off, there's still all the, I still have to do my taxes. I still have to do my paperwork. I still have to pay the bills. I still have to restock the store. Ah! It doesn't end, I mean. So it's, it's more so, of a time so it issue than it's like passion. a lot of what kind of attributes to your success is you guys buckling down and being responsible. So hopefully, you're at you're, your 10 months. Hopefully when your store is 10 years, You've delegated all of that work to somebody else, and you're playing video games in the back. <laughs> um, so there's uh, quite a few people in here, more than I actually expected. I, I didn't know what to expect actually from you know ten to two. You know, so um, I would imagine a lot of people in here are kind of you know not necessarily geeks. You know, not not trying to put anybody down, but you know, people who are looking. At you and then saying, man, that's that's something I want to do. So, if each of you could give a top three tips on how to either, you know, get your mind to be responsible or, or how to, you know, look for what to do, what are the top three tips for entering a profession that you are passionate about? 
And we'll start with Troy since you didn't even get to answer the last one. Okay. <laughs> do it yourself. Don't take no. Find a way. Whatever you love, just do it and commit to it and improve and as much as you can, immerse yourself in other versions of it. See what other people are doing. That's one. Two is, another person's success is not your failure. You can't gauge your, where you are by what somebody else is doing. There are people who I came up with who are now working on Broadway. And Las Vegas is great, and I absolutely love Las Vegas. And you know, the first time I saw someone get snapped at the Tony, I was like, oh wow. That's kind of cool. You know, I remember you when you were just, you know, cleaning that up. But their path is their path. You know, there is no one way to get what you want. I think that kind of overlaps with the whole DIY effort. It all overlaps. Yeah. Just don't take no for an answer. Let no inspire you to find somewhere, some, some way else. I think that's all just variations of the same. It's stuff I've always encountered. Is if you have an option, find a way to get over it or overcome it or go around it. You wonder. Um, I don't really think I could give any, like, single piece of advice. I mean, if you're passionate about something, really for me it came down to, and my partner, what is stopping us? I mean, if you really sit back and think about it, like, what is really stopping you from doing what you want to do? And for me it was just, I'm working too much, but I'm working at something I don't want to do. So I'm going to put less time into that and more time into what I want to do. And, I mean, it... it Obviously, there has to be a monetary side to it, and that's that's the realistic, you know, adult side of it. But really, you have to prioritize. I mean, a lot of us can work jobs we hate and make a lot of money. I mean, that, that's the reality of it. But if you want to do what you want to do, what is really stopping you? I mean, there's very few things that you could put your mind to that you couldn't make a living off of. I mean, we're proving that every day. I mean, from comic books to live performances to, I mean, I sell video games that are 30 years old. I mean, most people they walk into a shop and they have no idea that people even care. I mean, so, I mean, what is, I guess my advice is, like, you have to find out what's stopping you, and that's different for all of us. I mean, it really is. It might just be confidence, it might just be the business side of things, but that all those things can be taught and overcome. So, I mean, I guess it's just figuring out what's stopping you. That's good. PJ? Um, what can I say that you two haven't already said so well? Actually, what Troy said is a really good point about not looking at what other people are doing and comparing yourself to that. And that applies, I'm going to say, to if, it doesn't matter if, you're, if it's a creative career or not. Don't ever look at someone else's success and either feel envious or like you are behind somehow. or like Whatever you're doing, if, if it feels right to you, just you just do it. And you also don't have to try to go, okay, I'm going, I really want to play music. You don't have to say, I'm, a, I'm not succeeding if I'm not doing this full time. It's baby steps for everyone. And some people have success right away and some people don't. And some people are fine with, you know, having a nine to five job and just doing it, you know, in the evening or, you know, at, at, on the weekends as their passion. But you have to have that thing to be passionate about, whatever it may be. I don't care if it's collecting Magic the Gathering cards, like, whatever it is, just put your all into it, and, yeah, I mean, not taking no for an answer is really, you have to put your, you have to put yourself out there, and you have to be unafraid to be criticized, and you have to expect that you're going to be criticized. I mean, I'm sure all of your shows are great, but I'm pretty sure that I, well, I know for a fact that there have been some things in the press that have not been as kind. <laughs> But you know what? Did Troy stop directing or writing? No. Like, you, you just, you keep going. And, and I know that my early comics are awful. And I'm almost embarrassed to have them around sometimes. But that was, you get that out and you move on to the next thing. I have friends who are great writers. But they have novels sitting in their hard drive or their drawers or whatever. And they won't put them out or won't let anyone see them because they're afraid. And I'm like, if you want, this is what you want to do. If you are afraid to put that out there, you're never going to do that. You're not going to do it. And that's the key thing. You have to put yourself out there and put yourself on the line. Right. Um, I do want to open up for questions um, from the audience, but before we do that, um, I'm pretty sure everybody is sold on you guys. Uh, I mean, obviously, um, you're chosen for a reason. You guys are awesome. 
If anybody wants to contact you after today, how would they do so? Email, Twitter, um, they just lay it out, lay it out, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, um, I mean, I guess if you want to come to our shop, we're always there. It's at 693 North Valley Bridge. It's around the corner of Valley Bridge and Sunset. Um, we're like two miles west of the Galleria Mall. Um, you can hit us up on Facebook, which is where we post everything. Um, it's Retro City Games NV, because some guys in France took Retro City Games and don't, <laughs> and don't use it. Awesome times. <laughs> um, the French! <laughs> it's been like a year since they've used it. Yeah, it's, it's horrible. Um, yeah, I mean, we post everything there. Um, if you want to come get to know us, we almost always have games, like just like we have down here running in our store. We do game nights once a month. Um, I feel we're pretty approachable, and we really just want to build the community, so I mean, any of those avenues are pretty good with. We're going to try to have a tournament uh, at the library that they're going to host, so awesome. keep an eye out for that. Details are still up in here, though. Yeah. It will happen. Long, 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 long. If there's an Alex the Kid in Miracle World tournament, I'm in. <laughs> <Tom Master? laughs> That's funny. Um, for the Onyx, check out onyxtheater.com. Go to the Onyx Theater Facebook site. There are brochures over there with their upcoming shows. Uh, classes, we offer improv classes. Visit Vegas Theater Hub, that's re.com. Again, all the info's on the brochure. If you want to contact me, facebook.com slash director Troy, you can whatever, stop me, I'm boring. Just look for the bandana. Yeah. No, a, no I have a tie in that one. Whoa. Yeah. Was it your yeah. wedding photo? Yeah. Tie yeah. <laughs> and bandana. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Pop Goes the Icon. Just go to popgoestheicon.com, Twitter slash popgoestheicon, Instagram slash popgoestheicon. I should have brought something to put here, but we got a booth right out there so you can get a sticker or whatever. I've seen most of you people, so that's good. Uh, or PJ Perez, I'm at PJ Perez on everything, or pjperez.com, pretty easy to find. Cool, all right. I have a Questions, like anybody? I have two questions. Since then, it's all trade. Um, we're really heavy on trade. Um, we try to be extremely competitive. We give half the value of anything you bring in in trade. Um, the more rare it is, the higher I can go in trade. Um, sometimes 60, 70, 80 percent. Um, but it's pretty much all the community just trading in and selling. Um, I don't really have time to go out and hunt, and it's it's become extremely competitive as well. So I mean, we just try to get it by just being extremely fair in trade. That's, <laughs> They're normally the second weekend of every month. Um, we post the exact date on Facebook every month. Uh, the next one will actually be on August 15th. That's the second Saturday in August? Third, Third Saturday in August. There you go. Um, uh, it'll actually have a tournament hosted by a local YouTube channel called the C5 Play. Uh, they are running kind of like a Nintendo World Championship style tournament. It's going to be three random games. Nobody knows what they are. Not even us. Um, highest score on each game. With some store credit and some prizes. Um, you got still Toro, number one, do you still Toro Gravity 16 system? <laughs> yes, we do. Um, they're hard to keep in stock. We've only had a few since we've opened, but we do get them in. Well, how, mu how much is it like? <laughs> um, it all depends on the model. Um, they've gotten extremely popular in the last few years. They're anywhere from 140 to about 200, depending on what the other duo or the regular just Turbo 16. Oh, yeah, the Turbo Duo. The Turbo Duo runs a little bit more. Um, the Japanese models are a little less expensive, and they run U.S. games. Oh, yeah. They're harder to find. But I'd say you're probably looking for one in good condition, probably about 150. Okay. Well, well, if you get, if you get, if you get the Wii, it, or the Wii U, you can still play the TurboGrafx-16 games on it, right? Um, I 
I don't. I know you do it on a Wii, but do you do it on the Wii like, U? There's emulators and stuff like that. We don't really do too much of the botting, though. But you, you can on some of the Oh, and another thing. If you're doing a Terminate for Street Fighter 2, I'll have you. You might want to... Uh, that's in the works. Um, check it out. Like I said, Facebook, that's where we try to get everything out. Uh, uh, it's the easiest I, platform to <laughs> talk to everybody all at once. Um, I think DJ, sorry tomorrow. You haven't checked him out. He's a local artist here. He's got a booth down by us. Um, they're going to be hosting some retro tournaments with us. And stuff like that. I think Street Fighter is one of the things they bought up. That's a fair, it's really, really close.
Um, I actually had a bucket. I had to get mine on Amazon.com, but um, I mean, you can you can find this stuff. You just have to do a search for it. Okay. Okay, we got time for two more questions. Awesome. For the middle gentleman, yeah. do you have workshop? I'm sorry. Do you have workshops or anything for children? Sure or? do. We just finished our first team week. Okay. At the. Uh, what about younger about children, pre-team. like an eight-year-old? Eight-year-old? Not yet, but okay. it's something we'll look into. Okay. Absolutely. My my background actually after high school I went into uh, didn't go to film school didn't become the next Tarantino because theater had become a thing it was so quick it's so easy all you need is an actor and an audience there you go but mom, mom said hell no so I went into theater education okay. so that was my little compromise there so every time I work with a nonprofit I always try to institute an educational arm so that's our next step is reaching down and doing theater for young audiences and workshops for them. Well, cool. And to tie in with you really quick, you know the King of Kong? You ever heard of it? Yeah. We're bringing in the King of Kong in the musical. Oh, I'm <laughs> it was written by a guy, uh, this girl who just left um, The Late Show. She wrote this two, the two women play, Weeby and the other guy. Okay. And we'll be bringing that into the Onyx, hmm. October 9th and 10th. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, if you want to know you're talking about that. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody else have a question? Oh. Carter? The, the man on the left, um, you still think he's hard? Yes. I do. <laughs> 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 I don't think. <laughs> You know, okay, that game, like, um, it's, over, it's, over, it's, over, it's, it's not that bad. Yeah. Like, it's not that bad of a game at all. All you have to do is get to the side of the pit once you're up. Is that the one that they buried in? Yes. yes. Mexico, yeah, that whole It's really not that bad. So yeah, they, um, what's it called? Uh, the whole lore was Atari was way overproduced in which they did. And, um, dumped a bunch of them in the landfill in New Mexico, but it really turned out they just dumped their office in New Mexico, which happened to have a bunch of parts of it. But like people were, they were going for astronomical prices, like literally mangled boxes, like thousands of dollars on eBay, because there's this lore that it is the worst game ever, and it's really it's not. not even that bad. It's not. I <laughs> agree. <laughs> 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 if people read the instructions, they would know. <laughs> oh, last question. Okay, uh, for the man on the left, oh, is it hard to uh, value, like, and that's the end, but, like, classic game cartridges, since they're no longer produced and stuff, right? It is extremely difficult, because yeah, everybody you don't has... You know how much of one game is out there, right? We use mostly, um, I mean, it's, it's a free website you can use, it's called Video Game Price Charting. Um, it takes an average of online sales. So it takes a 90-day trend of Amazon, eBay, um, Half.com, and when applicable, uh, GameStop. Um, that's 90% accurate. Um, the problem is there's so many variants to some cards. Um, it depends on how people listed it. So if somebody on eBay or Amazon listed it as complete, or they listed it a lot, let's say they, they named that they had Super Mario Brothers in that lot, but it really was a lot of 10 games. Well, now that software recognizes that was sale for, let's say, $200, when well, it's really a $15, 20 game. So that can skew the average. So it's normally pretty accurate. Um, it's part just doing it for as long as we have, um, part that, and then, it, I mean, eBay sold is a really easy tool. Um, I mean, it's a really good indicator of what the market is really paying for things, and especially bidding. I mean, it really gives you an idea. I mean, eBay reaches literally hundreds of millions of people, and if it's, buy it now is are great because they're impulse buys and stuff, that's awesome. But for the most part, I mean, eBay auction is generally the best way to tell. Because, I mean, that is your biggest audience with people really actually getting and paying what they feel it's worth. I wish I had a better answer than eBay, but, um, but it really is the industry standard. What is it called again? Uh, video game price chart. It's run by a company called JJ Games. Great. Well, again, thank you for joining us today. There's a raffle that's going on. Uh, before we get to the raffle, though, I'm going to do a little bit of a trivia. Uh, in 2013, I shot a short film. It's uh, live action. 2D animation and uh, CG. Um, so I'm gonna have, I have three of these. I'm gonna ask three questions, and uh, whoever gets it right gets these. Question number one. Wait, wait. And Can the panelist answer? No. <laughs> um, and 
everybody just raise, don't call out the answer, raise your hands and I'll call on the you know, first person I can catch. So, which one of these gentlemen is PJ? <laughs> Two, uh, which one of these gentlemen used to make stop motion videos with G.I. Joe's? <laughs> yes. The one in the middle? <laughs> awesome. That's right. All right. Last, last question, last DVD. Which one of these gentlemen runs the Onyx Theater? Check it out from the Henderson Libraries for free. Uh, it's called the Crystal Crypt. So get your library card, the Crystal Crypt. Um, that's basically it. And I want to have a round of applause for the panelists.